Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Roger Sherman, pit master and owner of the District Pit Barbecue Catering Company in Washington, D.C., coming to you from the main kitchen of the O Street Mansion. I've got a terrific guest for you today. I've got my favorite food blogger in the District of Columbia, Chrissy Oliver-Smith of Eating with Chrissy. Chrissy, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much. I'm so happy to be here. Great, really appreciate it. So this is nominally a food show, so I'm yes. going to jump right into it. Chrissy, you've made some delicious desserts for us today. Yes. I'm going to get out of your way and you can tell us about them, what you got, and while you're doing that, I'm going to show everybody what Chrissy's made for us. Sure. So these are my apple cinnamon muffins with a streusel topping and they've got a whiskey, a, a whiskey bourbon cream sauce. <laughs> um, these are, this is probably one of my most popular recipes. My uh, boyfriend and I kind of made this together. He is more of the big. Hold on, hold on for a second. Whiskey bourbon cream sauce. Yes. Whiskey and, whiskey bourbon. Yes. Whiskey bourbon sauce. <laughs> Cream sauce. I, I'm in on that. She can, she can stop right there. If you were to just give me whiskey bourbon cream sauce in a cup, that'd be good That's enough. That's it. For me. But exactly. She, she put it on something else. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't cut <laughs> up. When you said whiskey bourbon, I, I went to a different place. No, you're all absolutely right. fine. Because I think we all do. Yes. Right? Because yeah. I mean, anything boozy. Is oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so yeah, it's a, it's a whiskey bourbon cream sauce. Um, there's a streusel topping on there, which is like cinnamon. Uh, Flour, nutmeg, um, some sugar in there, and then uh, the there's real apple bits in the apple cinnamon muffin. So it's one of my most popular recipes. So I figured you could try it. I'm going to try it. So me too. I'm gonna break protocol <laughs> here for a second. Me too. And take take my chances. This is gonna be good, folks. I'm not a huge dessert guy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> That is delicious. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm on top of my mouth full because I don't care. <laughs> that is so good. It is so moist and so rich. Mm -hmm. I would eat five of those. <laughs> well, gonna, luckily I bought you extra. Right. <laughs> this is great because she's got two extras. And I, you know, I've only eaten half of mine and I've got a wife and two children at home. They will see oh, none yeah. of that. <laughs> They're not. I was like, oh, you're gonna. <laughs> no, 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 I will leave those in the car. That is perfect. And I, will, I will eat those on my way to wherever I'm going. And they, will, <laughs> they will not see those. So, Chrissy, thank you for sharing that. That of was course, terrific. You're welcome. Again, you know, whiskey bourbon cream sauce, it doesn't get any better than that. But you've got a blog in DC, you got a lot of followers. I actually follow your blog, and you are yourself, yourself a chef. Tell me very quickly about what you like to focus on on your blog and hit me with some of your specialties. Sure. So I, you know, I've finally, I think, decided on a niche. So I was really kind of all over the place. It was just really in the beginning of my blogging. It was really more so just recipes I was making that I found interesting that I was posting. And I feel like since in the last year, um, I've really committed to trying to focus on recipes for like the um, overworked professional or the busy mom, you know, something quick that you can put on your dinner table in no time that doesn't require a lot of ingredients, but it's still fresh. Uh, I was definitely, my mother made a lot of um, hamburger helper, okay. <laughs> you know, okay. and threw some veggies in there, canned veggies in there. And um, I do believe that you can still have a quality meal and it not be um, dyed down in sodium like hamburger helpers typically are, um, or, you know, more of your boxed meals typically are. So you can still use fresh ingredients make a simple meal fast. So that's pretty much my focus of the blog now Sweet. and is transitioning into it. So what is your culinary go-to recipe? What is it that if somebody said, Chrissy, I need you to cook me your best dish, what is it? Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, it's probably spaghetti. Okay. <laughs> it's so simple, yeah, but it. I can honestly say, I mean, my family loves it. It's a super easy dish for me. Um, I own a, I will also say I own a vinaigrette line, and so a lot of my dishes look, lately have been using the vinaigrettes, whether it's Maryland's Finest or it's Greek Chicken or anything okay. that I can kind of throw together with the vinaigrettes, I'm using those too. Sweet. Mm -hmm. So you recently, I believe, launched an ebook. Yes, I did. We are in, obviously, people in the midst of a, a very, very difficult time in world history. Um, you know, I don't need to explain it to anybody. Um, but Chrissy has put out an ebook that addresses this specifically with respect to 
cooking and respect to culinary experiences. So there are a lot of people out there who have had to pivot with their business models, especially in food, in order for them to survive. Tell me about your ebook and tell me a little bit about how in your business the pandemic has forced you to pivot. Uh, so with the e-cookbook, it is a, um, it, it's called For Your Table, uh, holiday favorites from my table to yours. And it is pretty much just a spin on some of the holiday staples that are in my family. You know, so we have, um, we, there's traditional dishes that we make every year for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so the e-cookbook kind of just takes you into my world. You know, I, I talk about my grandmothers and my aunts that really influenced the book. I talk about all the different, um, all the different recipes that are staples to me, near and dear to our hearts, um, and it's right there in the e-cookbook for you. Um, and as far as the e-cookbook, I was looking to offer something different, um, maybe a little hope, if you will, for folks that are dealing with the pandemic and may not be able to make it to loved ones, but are still looking for great recipes that they can put on their tables. But and they, and they make, you know, sometimes folks are used to going to grandma's and getting and getting their home cooked meal, sure. but that wasn't really an option this year for many people, you know, trying to play it safe. They just chose not to, um, you know, participate Make in going move. to, exactly, and going to family functions. I have several friends that didn't see family this year. And the only reason we saw family is because we're, we're in a close proximity. So it was really just my immediate family, but I have plenty of friends that didn't travel. And Rightfully so, you yes. know, with the pandemic. But I think that it's really forced us to shift our thinking, you know, or shift our business models to, okay, we need to accommodate this. It's a change that we don't want, but it's a change that's here. It's present. It smacked us in the face. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. I, there was no plan for it. And now I think that what you've seen over the last six, eight months is people that have been able to really transition their focuses and, and learn from this um, or use this as a learning movement. I think overall, I think um, going into 2021, that was really what I wanted to eat cook. I wanted to eat cookbook to draw you in for the holidays, get through the end of the year, and then be ready, be excited for what's happening next year. Excellent. So specifically to your business, I know the majority of your cooking business is, is associated with being online. Uh, blog. Was there a pivot that you had to make or once that everything kind of shut down because your business model was basically online, did you not have to make a pivot? You just had to put out more content or, or what did you have to do specifically to switch? So for mm -hmm. me, you know, I'm a caterer. Right. Obviously, there's no opportunity to cater. Sure. So my business had to switch to individual platters where we were serving one serving at a time to a multitude mm -hmm. of people trying to get as many plates out as possible to try to continue to have a thriving business. And, sure. you know, while that was much harder than I had ever anticipated, it worked for us and, and we got it done. What did you have to do in order to pivot in this particular world pandemic? So I will say it was pretty great that um, my business is majority online, but I will also say that one of the things that we do as food bloggers is we go out to restaurants and that's kind of how my blog started was I was going out to restaurants and I was doing more restaurant reviews. So when the world shut down in March, it was it threw us all for a loop because a lot of us were used to going to restaurants and sitting down and eating and and getting free food i will say you know free food in exchange for exposure sure. right and so when those things shifted it was almost and we also well at least my group um my foodie group clan if you will um we did a lot of local businesses because you know in dc our market is so different it's so diverse mm -hmm. and a lot of them are mom and pops yes. you know and so that was what we really tried to focus on but in the pandemic you really couldn't I, we weren't going to ask them for free food anymore you know in exchange for exposure because you're barely keeping plates on the table right. as it is you know so that really was a pivot for us because it was it was kind of like you really saw who was innovative and who wasn't because it turned to can you cook because yes. this is how you're going to keep your people <laughs> you know this is how you can keep your following we can't shut down for eight months so you can you can still order takeout but it's not the same as experiencing the restaurant per se you know what i'm saying so i still had some foodie friends that did the takeout scene and um still promoted businesses that way and i still promoted businesses that way too but i turned more back into my kitchen okay and um so I would have to say that that's, that was my pivot, is that I was really doing a lot more like eat on the go 
and I started cooking more at home. So it turned into more lifestyle blogging because I was at home, I was cooking in my kitchen, I would take you to the grocery store with me, you know, I would, we would do all those things and um, that was my pivot. My shift was, it forced me back into my kitchen. But see, that, that is spectacular. This is exactly what I'm talking about, folks. While, while you're out there, if you've got a small business, again, if you are just surviving the pandemic, mm -hmm. that's okay. But if you can find a way to make your business function better during the course of the pandemic, you know, that's, that's what we all need to be focusing on. It's the only way we're going to survive. There is, you know, hope out there, but that hope isn't necessarily going to come in the next six weeks or the next 12 weeks or whatever the case may be. So keep focusing on that. So I had another question for you. Yes. My biggest culinary influence was my dad, mm -hmm. who was from the Bahamas and liked to cook meat over fire. He didn't smoke things, he typically grilled things because he was from the Bahamas, things went a little faster. Mm -hmm. He was my biggest influence. He used to do weird stuff like cook inside of a fireplace inside of the house. <laughs> which, oh, which, was, awesome. which was really cool. You know, I wish I had a fireplace. I can't, I can't do that now. Um, so I have a bunch of grills I have to get. Who's your biggest culinary influence? My grandmother. Grandma, okay. Mm -hmm. Grandma is, and she, that my e cookbook is actually dedicated okay. to her. But she, both her and um, I was fortunate enough to have lived with, for a good amount of my life, two of my great grandmothers. Um, and uh, my two aunts, um, my two paternal aunts are, they all influenced me tremendously. But my grandmother more so because that's where we went. I mean, that's where we were all the time for summers, um, for holidays. We always went to my grandparents. They only lived a couple hours away. So we would always go visit them. And it was always, what do you want me to cook? So whether it was spaghetti or it was stew, sweet potato pie, pecan pie, on any of that stuff, she was always cooking. Did she have a number one thing for, in your opinion? What, what was um, the thing you were going to ask for every time? Oh, spaghetti. Okay. okay. <laughs> so that's great because that's, what so she, that's, that's what your sucks. favorite. Okay. Exactly. Okay, it perfect. was my favorite. But okay. It's true. I mean, her spaghetti is unmatched. And I don't, you know, Grandma, she finally, finally gave me the recipe toolkit, right? With like all the little recipe, handwritten recipe cards. I finally got my hands wow. on it. But, um, but at the same time, just because she's not really cooking anymore. But at the same time, it was just, you know, she's definitely one of those, oh, you just put a sprinkle of that in, yes. honey. You know, and yeah. I'm like, I, I kind of need to know, is it a teaspoon or a tablespoon? Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm glad you said that. So, I, I recently uh, had a good conversation with somebody who was a baker. And, uh, you know, she was talking about, you know, measuring and all this other stuff. I'm a barbecue chef. I haven't measured anything in my life. <laughs> I, I haven't measured that. I love it. I just uh -huh. pull it in my hand and sprinkle it. Yeah, it looks good. Um, so, as a result, I, I do no baking. So, as somebody who is intimidated by the prospects of baking because I don't even own a measuring cup, what, what would you tell somebody who is intimidated by baking if they if they were going to you know uh, try try to make that step and say I want to try this? So I can honestly say I think I'm intimidated by baking too. Okay. So, um, um, but I think for me the I think the transition back into my kitchen and me wanting to recipe right is what really got me in the notion of I need to be measuring. Okay. And also, um, I had a little bout with high blood pressure earlier this year, so I needed to start watching the sodium. So that brought me back to all right, I need to be using measuring spoons and actually really measuring out what my salt intake and things like that look okay. like. So I would just say, um, as far as like someone who might be intimidated by it, is to just honestly just jump in there. And, and here's what I'll say: read the recipe, right? So because what I will say is that I am a fly by night chef, right? So I so I literally will read the recipe. I'll look at the ingredients and I'll be like, all right, cool, I got all that stuff, I'm good. And then I'll get to doing the recipe and I'll be like, damn, I don't have that. <laughs> or I'll be like, oh shoot, I don't have that recipe. I don't have that part, right? And so reading the recipe through and actually knowing, okay, my measurement of this goes here, my measurement of this goes here, I think has helped me a lot in terms of preparing. Okay. And, you know, we were talking about my YouTube channel before this. Mm -hmm. And um, on my YouTube, I really had to learn how to separate my things out so that almost like Martha Stewart cooking, you yeah. know? So like when I'm sitting there and I'm in front of the screen, I have everything I need. I'm not like, oh, hold on, I'll be right back. Well, and then you, this. Right, yeah. exactly. And then yeah. I beeline it to the right real yeah. quick. <laughs> so, so that's what I would say. I would definitely say, I mean, just embrace it, but definitely read through the recipe so okay. you know what you need. And I think that that will help. And, I mean, you, you got to buy measuring cups sure. and spoons and stuff. Got to own some. Yeah. I'll go pick that's up some today. <laughs>
<laughs> so my advice to people is like I said, as a barbecue chef, my advice to you to get out there and get in, I've said a couple of things before, go out there and buy a bunch of chicken and just burn it up. You know, just, <laughs> yes. chicken is cheap, just get out there, try it's it true. as much as you can, and then when you finally hit on the chicken, however it is that you hit on it, move on to ribs, mm -hmm. move on to pork shoulder, move on to brisket, but start with chicken. It's 99 cents a pound. If you burn it up, that's not great, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Right, exactly. So I'll get you out of here on this. This is a question that I like to ask of people. Okay. And if you don't have one, good for you. <laughs> but if you do have one, I want to hear about it. Tell okay. me your biggest culinary disaster. Oh, oh, yes, I have a recent one. Okay. So I. I love was, it when it's recent. Yes, it was recent because I just, um, I made a recipe uh, for a company. It was for pumpkin cinnamon rolls. And um, I, it was really my first time doing anything like that. Okay. So, and you know, I already said baking is a little intimidating to me. Okay. So, was, but I was like, I'm going to embrace this. You know what I'm saying? Grab it by it. keep it going. Go, right? go for it. Yes. So I got in there and I was cooking and I was baking up the bread. First off, uh, the Fleischmann's dry yeast you can buy in the little pack, so you can buy in the jar. So I bought this like ten dollar jar of Fleischmann dry yeast and I didn't realize that I only needed like a teaspoon of it. And so I had this whole jar that pretty much expired. Oh, so that was the that was the first story, right? First part of the story is. I bought a jar and I didn't know you were supposed to refrigerate it. Oh no. So, oh no. Right. So I no. so I used it. My dough didn't do what it was supposed to. It was a complete flop. And then I tried to use it again and I was like, my 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 milk isn't foaming because the yeast you're supposed to put in milk, uh, warm milk, let it activate, right? And it wasn't foaming. And I was like, what is wrong with this thing? I don't know what the problem is. And so I'm talking to like all my baker friends, right? And they're like, well, is your yeast dead? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, I just pulled it out of the cabinet and they were like, out of the cabinet? The cabinet. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And they were like, you, you're using the yeast in the jar? And I was like, yeah. And, they, and I was like, I don't know what the problem is. And they, they, they literally were like, well, there's your first problem. <laughs> your yeast is supposed to be in the refrigerator. And so had no idea. The packets you can just leave in your dry storage, uh -huh. but the jar actually, in order for it to stay active, it has to be in the fridge. Didn't know that. So I'll jump in on that real quick. <laughs> I didn't know that until just now. Okay. <laughs> just now. I'm helping y'all out. All right. I'm preparing you. So. So that was the first part. And then, so I went through three batches, three batches of pumpkin dough and nothing would rise. It wasn't doing what it was supposed to. My ratios were off and it just looked terrible. And then um, finally, you know, I worked with one of my girlfriends who's a baker who really does baking, right? And uh, she kind of gave me some recommendations and pointers and literally it really helped me to kind of get it together Great. and so and they finally rose but it was literally like four batches later and what's funny is I actually did it on my Instagram stories so by the time they actually turned out great everyone was like yes bravo <laughs> you did it you're so excited and I was terrific. just like I just I don't know what's That's happening terrific. <laughs> so Chrissy think, tell everybody how they can find you okay so um my blog name is eatingwithchrissy.com um, I am on Instagram at Eating with Chrissy, uh, on Pinterest at Eating with Chrissy all day, um, and on Twitter at Chrissy the Foodie. And um, I'm trying to think, I have an Amazon shop, so Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Eating with Chrissy. Um, and those are the ways that you can find me. But I please be sure eatingwithchrissy.com is my baby. Um, if you subscribe, I send out bi-weekly newsletters. Um, you're going to get a weekly recipe builder that's going to help you to kind of write out your recipes and list ingredients and everything uh, once you join and once you subscribe. And then I send great recipes out, not only that I make, but that my fellow food blogger friends make too. And we're all in here trying to make it, so please join me. Great. Well, I appreciate Chrissy for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, once again, everybody, thank you for joining us here at the main kitchen of the O Street Mansion. And we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye.